Ah, kia ora koutou. Welcome to the parenting segment of Home Learning TV. My name is Nathan Wallace and I'm here to help you navigate this time at home with your children during lockdown. Today we're going to have a look at an important feature of looking after your child's well-being, which is physical exercise and movement. Let's go to the couch. To really understand why intelligence is hugely affected by movement, then you have to also understand the role of endorphins. We all hear about endorphins, but what do they actually do? We know they make our kids happier, but they also make our kids more intelligent. So let's take a look at the role of endorphins. Endorphins are a type of hormone that's released into your brain. If you use a car metaphor, then endorphins are just like oil. They make the car engine work a whole lot more efficiently. Think of the engine as your brain. If you run out of oil in the engine, it seizes up and that has problems. Same with your brain. If we don't have the right endorphins, that has effect on our neurotransmitters and we can start to get symptoms of depression. In fact, if you go to the doctor and describe symptoms of depression, then the doctor will tell you to exercise because it's very well researched and documented that exercise releases endorphins and endorphins are going to help your mental health. To understand the biology of how endorphins impact on your mental health, then we have to look at neural pathways. So your whole brain is made up of a network of neural pathways. Everything you know is contained in those pathways. So if we zoom right in on that neural network and just take a look at one neural pathway. Now a neural pathway is basically made up of one branch coming from one neuron and a branch coming from the other neuron and they meet and connect and now you've got a neural pathway containing information in the brain. The role of endorphins is really around that point at which they meet. That's called the synaptic connection. Now it's not actually a connection because there's a tiny little gap there called the synaptic cleft. And this is where endorphins really play their role. It's because electricity is going to travel along that neural pathway. Your brain works by electricity. But when it gets to that synaptic cleft, it has to be turned into a neurotransmitter. Let's say, for example, serotonin. And so the electricity is turned into serotonin. The serotonin is released into the synaptic cleft. And then the branch on the other side has to pick up that serotonin and turn it back into electricity to complete the circuit. Now, if your brain's not working very efficiently, then the brain will not release, or that branch won't release, the right amount of serotonin. It's inefficient at releasing serotonin. And on the other side, that's inefficient at picking up the serotonin. So that could relate to depression, a decreased amount of serotonin. So when we introduce endorphins into that equation, endorphins basically speed up that whole process and make it more efficient. Because now, when the serotonin is going to be released into the synaptic cleft, a lot more serotonin is released. And also on the other side, that has to pick up the serotonin to complete the circuit and turn it back into electricity, much more serotonin is picked up in the presence of endorphins. Which is why the doctor tells you to exercise. Exercise releases endorphins. Endorphins increase the efficiency of your brain. Just talking and hanging out and laughing with our kids, that releases loads of endorphins as well. So keep up the connection whānau, but if your child's not so much a talker, then the other way to get endorphins in the brain is through movement. And it doesn't have to be formalised movement. Uh, just think games. In fact, what are the games you played as a kid? Because generally kids love playing games with their parents that they played as children. Simon says, put your hands on your head. Simon says, put your hands on your hips. Put your hands on your knees. Ah. We used to do spotlight, you know, torch in the dark. I'm sure your kids would love that. And don't forget the good old fashioned favourites, you know, hopscotch, tag. If your child's not so much of a mover and they don't want to play the games, then maybe um, give them some chores that require movement. Like rather than giving them the dishes, not much movement, think about maybe taking out the wheelie bins. If the child you know, doesn't want so much want to play games to get movement, then what about doing the vacuuming instead? Because there's a lot of movement in there. And if you find yourself inside for the day, looking for some movement, you'd be amazed how much movement is involved in dressing up. Or maybe just turning the stereo on and having a good old dance, a cunny cunny in the lounge. In fact,
for younger children, a great way to practice their fine motor skills is just to have a picnic, a tea party in the backyard. Another good one for when you're restricted for space or inside is balancing games. My grandchildren spend hours just challenging me to balance in games. Okay, I'm sure you've got your own ideas too, Fana, so don't be shy. Send them in, we'll share them with everybody else. Just go to nathanwallace.com, scroll down, tap on the link to Facebook and leave your feedbacks, your comments, your suggestions there. It's all greatly appreciated and we'll share it with everybody else. Okay, we've had a look at the role that endorphins play on like the micro level. We're looking at neurotransmitters and neural pathways. Now let's have a look at the role that movement plays in the overall brain. This is a model of the brain we used in an earlier session. I've just split it down the middle so I can explain a little bit about the structure of your brain. Here's your movement brain down here. It's actually this bulgy bit at the back of your head called your cerebellum. In the old days, they used to talk about the triune brain, which just meant three. You've got three brains. This thinking and learning brain up the top, the emotional brain in the middle, and brain number one included movement, so it was survival and movement. Um, the reason that we have now used a four-stage model instead of a three-stage model is we've basically worked out in the last 20 years that movement is so important it gets its own whole brain now. In fact, we have stopped calling it the movement brain and referred to it as the movement and coordination brain. Because basically, to summarise a lot of complex research in neuroscience, what we've found is that the movement brain doesn't just play a role in coordinating your body movements, it also plays a large role in, in, co in coordinating the higher intelligence of the frontal cortex. So really, movement and learning couldn't be more intricately connected. Okay, resources to help support you at home when looking after your children. So we've got lots of wonderful online resources. Susie Cato sent in some incredible ones, um, but so have lots of other people through our Facebook page. So um, the Ministry of Education has also provided us with some really onto it sites. So here's just a little sample of those. One that Susie Cato is heavily involved in is Kiwi Kids Music. So check out kiwikidsmusic.com. Wonderful resources on there for music and wire Another excellent one is Kindy Rock. So Kindy Rock. Com. Actually, if you go to YouTube, there's lots of wonderful resources on YouTube. There's um, Tree Hut TV. So there's one on there called Getting Crafty, which has got wonderful craft ideas. Uh, there's another one, Paper, Scissors and Glue, along the same vein. When we're focusing on physical activity, um, check out YouTube, one called Games On. That's got lots of um, physical activity and obstacle courses and stuff that you can set up to help the kids to do. There's some wonderful storytellers on YouTube too. So check out Kath B, YouTube, Music and Stories. And also have a look at Tanya Bat. I've seen Tanya Bat before. She travels around schools doing storytelling. She's got some wonderful online resources. So check that out. And of course, we can't go past one of our nationwide resources. We have a music genius in the country called Julie Wiley. She's here at Christchurch and does amazing courses. So she's got interactive music sessions. They're also wonderful for children with special needs, but really wonderful for all children. So you can check her out through the Champion Centre in Christchurch or just look up Julie Wiley online. Okay, that's our lot for today. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. Kia ora moto tai toko whanau. Ka mihi nui ki a koutou.